uh, Hen is from Brazil and she, I think about two years ago or so, got elected into office uh, with a collective from a culture mandate uh, that uses sociocracy. And uh, Henny, you know much more than I. So please, um, what can you tell us just about that and maybe just start introducing yourself and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Edith, Thomas and Irina and Sociocracy for All for being holding such beautiful seminars. Um, I think we can learn a lot from it and I hope to learn with you guys as well. So um, yeah, my name is Henny Freitas. I'm a Brazilian former journalist who um, once had the opportunity to in one day interview the former Brazilian president and on the other day being pulling the, the cart of a garbage um, collector in the streets of Sao Paulo. So what made me be a journalist was the fact that I could be involved in different fields and explore different fields as with an excuse to be investigating or writing some stories about it. So I was trying different fields in my life and uh, what brought me um, like the attention and the desire to be a um, politician, I think it was the contact with nature and to give nature a voice and to defend nature because we are nature voices. We are part of nature, but we, you know, we cannot give voice to a tree. So how we could do that through politics. And then I took a step into permaculture where, you know, just like by looking at these three ethical um, principles of care for earth, care for people and fair share, I could be doing my job and, uh, being, you know, like closer to understanding how we could communicate and be part of nature. And then like from my permaculture studies, I had the opportunity to uh, be close to sociocracy. Today I'm, I'm a sociocracy facilitator and consult consultant. That's a difficult word for me still. And then it was, you know, like last year, um, a collective mandate um, brought like innovation into the Brazilian politicians um, and politics aspects, which um, resumes on a group of people taking decisions together. And then, you know, like one, one part of the team, you know, one person of the team just um, brought up these um, tensions saying, you know, like the elections, of the following year, which is this current year, 2021, will happen and we need to continue having, you know, like some someone to talk about the environmental issues into office and also to carry on this uh, legacy of having a collective group um, of le legislature, the legislators taking decisions together. So, you know, like I, I was caught by this tension and when I realized we were already forming a group, discussing mission, vision, values, and then we were approaching the principles of permaculture and sociocracy, and then decided to run for an office. That's a little bit of the story, but I'm sure I will be able to explore a little bit more towards it. Thank you, Annie. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what does it mean uh, a, a collective mandate? Because that's you know that's part of uh, the, of the name of your, your organization, and I'm interested to know you know how how it how it happens to be a collective mandate. If you know you are normally you as an individual are uh, elected into office, you know. But so what does it mean to be a group of people with uh, linked to uh, a representative or, or, or more? I'm going to answer that, but just like to do um, a reminder of the etymology of the word um, um, democracy. When we talk about democracy, we are talking about the crassy of the people. Crassy comes from uh, kratos, the Greek kratos, and means power. So it's power to the people, power distributed amongst the majority of people. 
And when we uh, politicians are elected by people, it means the majority of the population of the people from that city, state or country voted on us. But the participatory process of this um, event stops there, stops in the election um, event. And then, you know, it's very rare to follow politicians who have the access to talk to people, who motivate a participatory uh, governing. And uh, by thinking of that, the only um, aspect that would motivate me to be a politician would be to have this participatory governing process. So uh, when we formed a group of people, we chose to be four and we chose to be two women and two men. So uh, by um, definition, we couldn't have majority, you know, like of voting. And we were not looking for consensus either, because you know we understand that if we look into a permaculture aspect, there is one principle that values the diversity of nature, and we are nature, so we need to also value the diversity of ideas, the diversity of information, the diversity of different um, thinking processes. So we then formed a group of four people, and uh, we four are called counselors. By law in Brazil, this is not allowed yet. This is not legalized yet. We still have Henny as the representative of the group. So there is like something that we could from within the, the um, legal aspects and, with, and, and from the outside. So like with the population, we are collective mandate. You know, we do, the four of us um, act in different areas of society and uh, that we use the seven different domains of permaculture. We can go into that later on if you guys are interested in knowing a little bit more. But uh, we, do, we do work in a holistic vision. So, you know, like we, we go into these different arenas and we bring back the information and these helps us to take decisions collectively. So we are four people, but there is just like one voice. And we work with sociocracy for that. So we take decisions by consent and consentment, and we structure our group using the sociocracy methodology. So I am uh, occupying this moment. I am like um, running this role of being the representative of the group, which means that I bring all the four people voice, including mine, into the office. But um, one, one of the first actions that we did was to ask for permission for our operational leader to be present at these meetings in order to do the double link. So this um, operational leader would listen to the whole um, other nine counselors and bring back the, the, the information to the collective group. But because of the pandemic situation, we were not allowed to carry on with this process. But all the sessions are transmitted by radio. So we still do this double link process. So I don't know if I answered your question or if I went already to in different fields. So let, let me know where I am and bring me back to your question. No, 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 absolutely. Like uh, you, you're already giving a lot of uh, hints to... A lot of curiosity that I have and probably uh, all of us have. Um, like, I wonder what what do you feel are the advantages to work like that? Because, you know, I feel like that uh, being a representative of your own, you know, can give you, you know, full autonomy on to decide whatever you want to decide. Yes, you're a representative of the people or part of it. But uh, so what, what do you feel are the advantages of, uh, of, you know, being part of a group that decides together and then you are as a representative, then speak in, in, you know, in the political arena, but representing, you know, at this, you know, many voices and uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think your last sentence gave the answer to this question because I represent many voices, not only the four of us, because what I what I what I realize into when I am working in the office with the other eight counselors is that I hear their voices and I don't know who they are representing. I know that they represent who voted on them, but I, I can't see um, 
this voice being distributed. I cannot listen to all the other, you know, voices behind them. Whereas in the structure that we created, we do promote discussions. We do take into account all the voices that are, uh, accept our invitation to be part of. So when we receive um, a lot to investigate and to analyze, we go to the society and ask questions and ask for involvement. And due to the pandemic situation, we do everything online which is now taking an advantage as this current moment because people are online all the time through their WhatsApp um, and, and you know, through their mobile connection. So um, we ask for their voices and we are having like a, a very um, pleasing responses. So yesterday, for in instance, the day before yesterday, I wanted to talk Okay, so I wanted yesterday to talk about the, the current situation that we've been facing here with the renting aspects that because um, Airbnb came into place, you know, like all the native people who were born here are being expelled from their houses and we'll probably have to leave the city because of all the gentrification aspects and this current um, um, situation. So I wanted to represent this voice. So, but like with which um, base would I be speaking from? You know, like, like I am facing this current situation, but I am one person. So just going online and, you know, just like distributing these um, um, specific questions to get statistics, to get, you know, qualitative also opinions, I can represent this much better. And then you, you might question, but isn't it the job of all politicians? Yes, it is. But like currently, who actually does that? It's difficult to answer these questions because I myself don't perceive this happening in, in the city I represent, which is very small. In the city I was born, which is Sao Paulo, and currently I have 23 million people. These voices disappear. Here we have 7,000 and we just with, with this um, question, we reached about 2,000 people, which is a good representation of the reality that we face. And what we do like by, by working with the permaculture, with the seven domains of permaculture. So for those who don't know anything about permaculture, it's based on principles and some domains. So there is like a flower of permaculture with seven different domains. And we are working with these seven different domains that will, in the end, give us um, a vision of the whole. So it's the same as sociocracy if you put everything into circles. So you have like your current and your focus, the specific areas of domains. And then when, when you join everything into a general circle, you have this holistic view. So what we did was to open uh, the fourth chair of this collective group to society and every three months we are rotating it with a new person from the, so the civil society so we decided to start with the um, better with the domain education and culture we invited someone well we we open a questionnaire for someone who wanted to join us we received some responses we interviewed these people we had um, a sociocracy election taking place and then this person came to start with uh, to start working with us and then this person will be then uh, forming another circle that will be carrying their studies on uh, culture and um, 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 education education and culture and that's already been part of a new group that will include more people from the society and then when we joined all the seven domains and we included um, a native um, domain, which is the, the women, we need to give attention to the women in our um, city, everywhere in the world, I'm sure. But that's like a current um, need from our um, city. We will have then like many more voices talking to us. So we are starting this movement in order to show people that they are part of the decision-making process. But if we don't have a structure, this voice will never come to us. So by using so sociocracy, we are creating 
the necessary structure in order for these voices to be heard, taking into account and being actually an effective, effectively part of the decision making process. So that's the advantage I see. Instead of just being me in the office and just saying like, I think and I assume and I do and I no, it's, I just speak in the, in the third um, person saying like, we do, we think because I can be based on a solid um, voice that come to us from different fields and with different people. Cool. And I feel like that uh, if you're backed by, you know, a, a group of people really like uh, helping you, you know, to take the best decision, like, you know, you, I don't know, I don't want to use the word power, but you, you maybe feel more powerful, you know, to raise your voice, you know, you know, a delicate matter um, for, for the people. If the people are included, you know, actively participating in the process of deciding, you know, what's the best for themselves. And Idi, do you have a question you want to ask, Annie? I just want to give you an example before the question, otherwise I just lose this, because yes, we are talking about power and we don't deny it. And yes, we use sociocracy because when we use sociocracy, we can distribute this power amongst um, people, but we have limitations within the uh, current and obsolete polit political system in Brazil um, and in the world, I'm sure. Because I, I'm just gonna give you a, um, a quick example of what happened. One of the councillors presented a law in which um, it would make holiday a, a holiday uh, one specific class of religion. So when we when we look into permaculture and we look at trees value diversity, um, include instead of segregating and all these um, principles and um, that 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 really gives us like the power to then speak up. For, for people, we decided to do like um, um, a replacement for this law. So we had like, you know, we wanna make bank holiday this um, um, class of religion. And then we created this replacement law, which says, you know, let's create the day of the faith manifestation because we will include this sector of society which has this particular um, uh, religion, but we are also including all the rest. And that would be like giving voice to everyone. Everyone would have the right to manifest their own faith. And we had the support from the society. We did it together with people. And they were, you know, like, they were not like majority or minority. They were like all saying, yes, we want to be included. And then when we presented, we were just like, uh, mm -mm, that's not good enough. You know, like, no, because if I do that, what would I say to the people who voted and me? And wants their right to, you know, like just be uh, have their day uh, be transformed into a bank holiday. So we have still this type of mentality that although we want to include and we want to to use, you know, like these um, social tools that we have now, we are still dealing with the old way of doing politics. So I think what we are doing now is a transition to open people's minds, and in the near future, we'll have more of this way of leading, this way of represent, instead of just having the old way of just trying to separate and segregate people and their own wishes. So it's just like, yes, we wanna do that. And we are doing that more like with society than having actually the, 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 um, the results that we are expecting within the office but we are getting there because they are getting to know me and they know that you know like when i speak i don't speak for myself but like we have the always with us so we are like in the process i'd say wow that that sounds so fascinating henny and it feels to me it's like uh really allowing people to trust that something like this is even possible, that there is inclusion, that we really want to hear everybody's voices. And, and I guess that the old mind sometimes doesn't believe this agenda. Uh, so I, I, I feel that, you know, 
what you're saying, it, for me, my, my body just gets opened up with hope uh, that we can do things differently. Um, and I really, if we have time, would love to hear about the seven domain and, and to see maybe the equivalence to them or how they merge with sociocracy. But just before that, a question that I had in mind was when you said, you know, we've had response from 2000 people. I wonder how does it look in the processes of, of sociocracy? How do you create consent or how do you uh, really can include all these different voices? Uh, what, how does that process look, uh, the structure of the process? That's, that's a very good question and it's a very difficult one to, to answer. I think we are in the process of finding it while we are doing it. Because if, if there is one thing that I learned with sociocracy is that we, we don't and we can't control and predict the future. So what we are doing now is to create the spaces and the structure in order for that to become a reality. But we are not just this, uh, deciding all the time. So we are doing like groups of studies or just by, by this uh, questionnaire that I launched and I had a very quick response. It means that, you know, people want to be heard in this aspect. So I just sent a questionnaire and we are now um, running a um, program that we will discuss it further with people. So uh, at, in this way, we are gathering information instead of just, you know, like imagining or supposing. So that also is the way that we can include people in order to base our decisions upon. So it's not just like, you know, we have 7,000 people, so let's create 1,000 circles with 1,000 people in each circle. And then from that, do double link. No, that doesn't work in that way. We need to do step by step. And the way that we decided to do that was to um, use permaculture and, uh, you know, with these circles that we are using to create the opportunity for people to discuss into this uh, focus group areas and then join them into this holistic view and have these holistic approaches. So one thing that people, we were, by the way, the most elected people um, uh, in the history of the, the town. And we are like 75, 60, 67 years old and that's because we were just we just added these two words you know like we just said you know we want to be a group of people taking decision together and we want to put the permaculture um, in order to build our borders so people understand that we are not taking decisions because um, it comes to our mind what's right or what's wrong we have something to be based upon so, you know, like with the principles of permaculture, it gives us the idea of, you know, like we are secure in what we are deciding. So the other day, someone tried to talk to us about um, what do you call the, the, the NG, MGO, um, transgenic um, seeds. And no, we don't discuss this, you know, like we discuss about organic seeds. Because this is what is, you know, like our domain area is to talk about what you guys voted on us to, to. So it's a bit like this. So it gives people security also to to know where, you know, like where we are going towards. I don't know if I answered your question or if I just like went yeah. through. No, I, I feel that I feel that you've answered, and and, and partly what I'm really hearing and maybe mirroring back is. First of all, this constant um, deep listening to the environment constantly and responding all the time to what's coming and then moving and including all the time as, as you grow. So you're not coming from a set structure, but rather pausing every moment and saying, okay, where we are, where do we want to go? How does that create it? Which feels very alive and very, very dynamic. So yes, thank you. And, and gives me a good uh, uh, a start of the feel of, of how these structures happens for you. So yes, thank you. And we um, are creating this structure while we are going yeah, into that. While you're walking. Yes, yeah, because you know, like sociocracy is a dynamic uh, structure. When we started, we were four, and then one of the members decided to accept the invitation from the executive, from the uh, from the mayor. Um, to be working into the culture area 
So he left. We were three. And then we said, you know, like we are losing credibility because we were elected. We were four. And then I said, yeah, but we work with sociocracy, which is a dynamic structure. So what if this fourth a person could be included like um, every three months we change people, we invite one person from the society, we focus in one area specific. So we, you know, like really go into that, which is happening for the first time now in, into the area of culture and education. And we are experimenting. So I say that we are a political lab as well. And, yeah. and nothing is static because otherwise we would just say, oh, okay, so one member of the group left, that's the end of it. No, we can reinvent ourselves. And then we just did like a proposal, an, an internal proposal. We went for a consent decision-making and that's it. So every three months we will have the opportunity to invite a member of society to be part of the decision-making of their own society. So that's a red and innovation. And that's only be possible because we have a structure that is not static, that is not, you know, black and white, there is not a square that gives us the opportunity to experiment what's good enough for now, what's safe enough to try, we go with that. And then if not, we have constant and, and quick feedback process that we can know, you know, like, because we have society vigilating us. So, you know, like, I like what you did there, but I don't like what you did that. Okay, so like, let's improve what we have to improve why you're doing because otherwise we just like retain in the structure we need to do the perfect thing and then we at the end we don't do anything because we are just putting energy into trying to do something that is, we don't know where it's going to go to so yeah flexibility is a key word for you know like whoever is in politics because we are constant being bombarded by different needs and different situations you know like we, before we were talking about climate change and now we are talking about pandemic situation and everything suddenly. So you need to have a structure that you can adapt through the needs of that moment. And sociocracy has been a key to us on that. Thank you. Thomas, do you want to continue? Yeah. Like we... Um... Uh, like I liked a lot to listen to, you know, what's been the people's response, you know. So, um, uh, you know, people seem to be happy, you know, to be able to participate in a different way. And uh, if you want, um, yeah, like I really would be interested to know, especially in COVID, in in the COVID crisis, you know, what what has meant this, you know, this participation in such a harsh moment for people. And uh, so th that's uh, for sure a question. But then I, I'm also really interested to know uh, the politicians' response, like to those people that have been there, maybe elected mu multiple times, you know, like what did they think about, you know, your group? Like, are you just a, you know, did they think that you were just a group of political weirdos or, you know, what's, wh what about that? We are all for sure navigating this into this world of politics uh, for the first time. So we are, you know, all new sailors learning, learning how to, um, as, 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 as Sashaka says, you know, learning how to navigate while building our own paddles. So um, today I just heard that for the first time, you know, like, oh, Henny and her group, you know, the Mandato Coletivo Permacultural, were the most elected um, councillors, you know, had the most votes of, of this councillor thing in, in Alto Paraiso history. And nobody knew who Henny was because, you know, like there was just like my face stamped in the number uh, in, the, in the box. And, uh, and, and nobody knew who I was, you know, like, and, and my hair is tied up, but I have like a, a really long dreadlock hair. And all these kind of, you know, hippie foreigner um, attitude coming into a town that has its natural beauty and it needs to be taken care of. So they were just like, who is she and, and what, what does she want to do here? You know, like uh, never heard of it. And, and, and all the other people, you know, like, but with the collective group, we were lucky also because that's the second time that it happens in sequence in our city. Before us, I like to remain to, to, to go back to nature and say that, you know, 
when we look into a forest, we see like all the trees and, and, and this beautiful atmosphere that um, all the trees combined created. But that started with something and that something were like the pioneers. So we started with one tree that suffered a lot to grow, but created like enough shade for the other one to grow. And, uh, you know, like, and because of the leaves, um, enhanced like the soil and made sure that other trees would have the enough material to grow and that and and then that generated life so the pioneers of the movement were like the previous uh, five people that decided to um to innovate into politics as being co-counselors and and now we have you know like a movement in brazil that we have i think 30 um uh, collective mandates spread out in our country. And now these 30 groups are trying to change the law in order for the constitution of Brazil to accept this new way of, of politicians and of politics. So it's, it's a part of a movement, you know, like we never start by ourselves and we'll never end by ourselves. If that's not good enough, people will just drop it and say, mm, that doesn't work. But while we have the possibility to experiment, this is what we are doing. And, and with the participation of people, they are the ones, um, um, what do you call, testifying and approving if this is the best for the system. But one thing is clear to us in Brazil, you know, like the way politics are doing, we don't want this any, any longer. That's why the changes are appearing. We don't have the solution for all, but we are trying different ways and, and actually being innovative in, into the politics um, arena and the politics scenario. Where it's gonna lead us, the history will tell, we don't, we don't have the answer yet. Thank you, Annie. Because like, uh, like I always like I thought for a long time that revolutions happen, you know, one day, you know, all of a sudden. But you know, from what uh, what I've been hearing, it seems like that you know, revolution is going to be like really like you know, it's, it's a process that has to be built and has to evolve and to l learn from practicing. And um, do you feel like you're you know you're trying to revolutionizing the the system, the democratic system, or you wouldn't say that? I would say that I'm trying to evolutionize, take the R out of it. I think the revolutionaries were back in the 70s, you know, like um, Bill Mollison and creating, um, along with his um, pupil, um, the principles of permaculture. And Gerard Edinburgh in his own um, industrial, uh, you know, like into, into his job, into his, um, I forgot the name, like enterprise, he created the sociocracy methodology. I think those were the revolutionaries. And what we did was just like to combine it and try to follow the steps of this evolution. And uh, if we imagine that this was all created in the 70s, you know, like all sociocracy and permaculture were uh, coined and, you know, like in this, in the way that we know it uh, as if today, they were introduced in the 70s. And in the 70s here in Brazil, we have a dictatorship. So this dictatorship prevented people from, you know, like speaking up for themselves. They did. And it was a very revolutionary moment uh, by then. But they had serious consequences, you know, like they were tortured, they were imprisoned, they had to skip the country in order to survive. Now it's not happening anymore. So we, we you know, like the, the, the tree was planted in the 70s and now we are just like taking the fruits and sharing it with society. So I think, I think these pioneers that I was mentioned before open up the ways in order for us to be able to explore and um, experiment. So that's why I like to say that we are, we are you know, like um, doing a laboratory of this experience. And uh, as politician, you know, I'm also part of um, um, a movement called uh, GARN, which stands for um, um, 
Global Alliance for the Rights of Nature. So we are giving rights to nature because nature has its own rights. But if we don't recognize it by law, we, you know, we can just like burn, um, extract uh, without any, you know, any um, limits. So now that we are in power we have the power to give voice to nature and this is what we are doing also we are just like learning what are the needs of nature and and give voice to it so we are taking our internal um, um table i don't know how to say that thing in english but we are you know like um changing that in order for uh, nature to have its own rights secured we are giving voice to the rivers you know, like we are uh, writing laws to protect the river. And yesterday I had a meeting with um, with a very smart and intelligent guy who said, you know, like the river is just what we see, but we don't tend to pay attention to the invisible part, which starts with the rain. So the rain comes and fills the, um, the underneath table. I don't know how to say that in English either. And then that will form like the streams that will you know, join rivers that will join bigger rivers that will then go to the ocean. If we don't have this system, you know, this this holistic approach to it, we will forget the importance of the element uh, water and the importance of just give the right to the river to be clean. Because we are just like extracting, 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 polluting, polluting, polluting. And we forget that we need it to be able to survive. And the current system that we live, you know, like with our toilets, just like there's pure water coming. And then when we flush it, we don't know where it goes because nothing is being treated. I mean, some treatments exist, but that's not majority, at least not here in the city that I am currently representing. So how we can also come with solutions, not just to creating laws, but also to give solutions to people, at least in order for them to think differently and to have a closer look to the element. Another example is like to the, the garbage, um, the dumping place that we have, you know, people just say, I think that should be extinct. Oh, we should move places. But the dumping place, the garbage area just exists because we produce garbage. So like, what are we doing? You know, like, shall we change our mentality? Shall we change our culture and the, lay, the way we live? Or shall we just like be comfortable in our seats complaining about how system works? So it's not just like um, take away the system or it's to inject, you know, a positive virus into the system to change it from within. And now we have the power to reach more people through, um, actions and 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 just like by showing examples of how clean systems working work or you know like alternatives to live a more health healthy and um, and sustainable lives we need to think about regeneration so now we are you know making laws creating laws to think about regenerative systems and not just to sustain a system that we can no longer sustain so it's a change of mentality, it's a change of a metaphor in order to act differently. So by being this group of people who are working with permaculture and sociocracy into politics, it's already a way to just say, oh, other ways are possible. So let's look closer into this aspect of life and see how we can learn from nature and create laws that will allow nature just to flourish. Because by doing that, we are also being uh, benefited by these changes. And then understand that we are one in this whole universe. It was almost a preach, no, like amen to the end, because that's like how it's <laughs> how it's how it, it, it's yeah, it's how how we are changing our way of thinking and not just being greedy or, you know, like these I want from me and, and this law that I'm creating and just benefiting part of the society who then is the way that, you know they're gonna come back with the money and then do like build more more concrete or whatever you know it's just like yeah and auto paraiso has this um alternative uh, mindset so we also we couldn't do that i think in sao paulo for example 20 
three million people, you know, I would be just like one more. But here it's a small city, so we, we, we should act where we can make difference. And this is what we are trying at least. And the result is that, you know, like we've been invited to talk about it. So, you know, we are reaching more people. So I'm already happy with the work we've, we've been doing. That's wonderful. Um, so um, I think it's 50 minutes we started. And I think it's a good moment to, to see if there's some questions from the audience. Yeah. And so, yeah, feel free to drop a question on on the chat or and irina will um keep a look on that yeah you can write it on in the chat or you can also raise a hand and just say your question don't be shy guys come on There's uh, there's a question. Uh, no pushback ever. Ted, you want to elaborate? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, it sounded like there was a lot of appreciation, which is wonderful. And I would love to hear more about things that maybe people have said or that you read between the lines of um, how far out is that? <clears throat> what I guess I'm I'm curious where the you know how we talk about the immune response of of the system you know when you when you try and like um change things I'm just curious about the immune response of try people who want things the way they are. The which response? Sorry, Ted. Uh, immune response. Um, you know, like some people response. I understand that, but. <clears throat> the old system fighting back and wanting to keep things the way they are have you encountered that and how did that manifest um there will when you present a change there will always be resistance and um i think correlating that to a sociocracy tension when you say tension or like oh i i've got tension i want to share it when it's just subjective to one's per perception it can create like some fissures and and some conflicts and some resistance um but um what can we do i mean like we just we just go with with these resistance also but uh, so far, the only resistance that we've uh, uh, realized was um, was the fact that when when I am in office and each time I say we we we, they refer to me me me. So it's it seems that you know as almost they exclude the um, the understanding that we are a group of for people that dialogue with the whole society. So they wanna make sure that it's just like the vereadora Henny, you know, like Henny, the, the counselor Henny all the time. And then I said, and I always say, you know, like we from from the Mandato Colectivo Permacultural and, 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 and there was one time that one of them were just like talking to me and say, you know, like we cannot even write the name in the, in the minutes like this. So they put, instead of putting like in capital letters, they would just put like in lower letters, not recognizing the system that we are creating. So I think the resistance is, is, is more like within the office than outside. Outside, we are just like gaining more attention, but with being like more into people's eyes also, you know, like it doesn't mean that because we were elected, we just like accomplished our mission, no, like, my phone doesn't stop ringing and it doesn't have like a, a time for that to happen. You know, like I receive phone calls, messages and, and try waiting like half an hour to once they are already like, oh, what's happening? You know, like you need to talk to us. So it's it's much it, 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 it it's easier in a way to um, talk to people because we are part of them and we never made a separation. But within the office, there is still this going on. But like just by using a different vocabulary, I, I see that people are catching it. You know, like when I say, oh, you know, like let's do a collective 
work, you know, like in the squares, because we just like unite people and then we just like refurbish a square, you know, we, we plant trees in the square and we look after it. People are just coming and, and the politicians around me are just like replicating these words. And the president of the office, for example, he, when there is like the, a, a lot to be voted, he goes around everyone. And then the last one is the one that introduced the, 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 the requirement or whatever it's called in English, like the, the document. So there are like some similarities that I can see. And, and just by repeating this new vocabulary to them, they accept it more and more. And some of them are already recognizing, respecting more the way that we decided to do things. But I think the resistance is more within the office than, than outside. I don't know if this is what you wanted to know, Ted, or if I just no, this made is it perfect. up. <laughs> no, this is perfect because it's, it sometimes seems like the system is lagging behind, right? But people are actually already very ready. So that, yeah. that actually goes perfectly along with what you're saying. Thank you so much. Yeah, and one one very quick uh, example of that, you know, like we've been as counselors, we've been invited. Our city has been invited to join the whole state of counselors. So we had a meeting with, you know, like I don't know, hundreds of people, but in a very big area. So we we were able to respect like all these COVID things uh, restrictions. Um, but, you know, like they had already they schedule, I think it was three days and they had already they schedule of who were going to talk and the DD. And then when they found out that I was there, I've, I've just been immediately invited to talk about this new way of, of doing politics, because we are the only one in the whole state that is working like this. And it's new to everyone. So, you know, like people were just like asking me questions and wanting to find out more how we did that, how we were elected, how we take decisions, how we listen to society, what is different from us and them. And so I think, I think people want to know more, but when they don't know um, what is ahead of them, the, the immediate response is fear. And then when they understand that we are not there to compete, but to collaborate, they lose a little bit their, you know, army kind of, um, um, way of thinking and they are more open to understand what's happening. So I think we are gaining more uh, space and letting the resistance out a bit. Can I, uh, can I just ask a quick yeah. question about that? Yeah, I'm, just, yeah, sure. I'm just wondering about, um, see, with local cultures, uh, one of the things that I feel is that the hierarchy and the business structure and all this has been imposed and, and we've all been taught, oh, yeah, we've got to be that way. And yet so many um, of the either native cultures or, or, or subcultures in the area do, uh, do have this participatory type of, of, of mindset of structure, but we've been you know, so <laughs> pushed in the other direction. Um, and I was just wondering if appealing maybe to, you know, some of these, um, you know, more uh, grassroots uh, cultural norms would, would make a difference. Um, oh, thanks very much, Debbie, for your question. It just like came to my mind one sentence that I use a lot from a friend of mine, a Guarani friend of mine, like um, a chief of an indigenous tribe in the south of um, um, Sao Paulo. He said, um, culture is what we cultivate. Mm. So we are currently changing our way of thinking. We are currently um, understanding through more and more information, especially in this um, tech scenario that we live. So we can allow things to change by cultivating a new culture. So uh, because we have uh, lots of alternative people living currently here in Alto Paraíso, we had the opportunity to propose an, an alternative way of thinking. And that's why we got elected because you know native people didn't really know us. But now that we are in a, into office, we are reaching out these people and uh, presenting them a different way of thinking and exchanging with them because they are the guardians of this place. 
So, um, so the interaction happens by the opportunity that arises with these uh, possibilities. And um, in this uh, domain that we are working now, culture and education, we are focusing on um, um, like not maths and, and, and language or whatever, but you know, like the rubbish education, for example, people are still burning their plastics in open streets. So how we can change this culture? Ah, but I learned from my father who learned from my, from his father who learned from his father. And, and yes, but now you know that if you burn plastic, the emissions that you were breathing will, you know, like create harm for your healthy immunity system. So we are currently facing different uh, changes and with information and, and with arts, we are using arts as a, as a way of, talking to people instead of just being you know like I have a microphone in my hand I am the counselor and I have the power to tell you what you have to do so I think I think people are more um, ready and open to learn and to listen to when you speak their own language or when you use arts to to speak through these issues um, and we are also creating, um, you know, like a, a, a range of um, campaigns to talk about rubbish and, and the problems that it causes, as well as to create campaigns to talk about politicians and politics. Because when we list to, listen to the word politics or politicians, we just say like, oh, corruption. No, no it's not for me. No, it's a broken system or it's a lot of harm words attached to it. And people don't know what, you know, what's the role of the councillor, what's the role of the mayor, what are the investments that come from town, where it came from, how it can be spent. So it's a new language that I am learning it right now, and it's very complicated. So what we are doing is just trying to translate it all in order for people to understand what it means and, and, and how they can be part of it all how they can create their own laws and how they can be we and we work together because every voice in them matters, but they need to know that their voice will be taken into account, will be taken into consideration. So um, culture is the key and we are trying to um, recreate and cultivate a different culture that is more inclusive, that is more participatory, that is more diverse instead of just trying to do like, you know, a monoculture of soy or bean, which, which has around this area and just like promote the forest that, that we are all together, you know, this social forest with all the diversity, diversity that we have within. So it's, it's a bit what we are trying to do, what we are doing. The there results is... we're gonna see, but we are doing it. <laughs> there is a, there is a question in the chat which is partly to you Henny and partly maybe to you Ted because uh, Romana is wondering whether the different other groups that are starting permaculture method are connecting with each other in a sociocratic way I can start and, and give it to Ted because I'm part of um, the sociocracy for all family and uh, we have a circle called permaculture. And within this circle, we are studying the, the, the bridges between and the connections between permaculture and sociocracy. And I had it ready to show you guys, but I, uh, now that's the time. Um, a, a result of that, I made an article and I published in this uh, permaculture design magazine. And the article, the article was first published in published into the um, uh, SOFA website, but that's called Permaculture and Sociocracy as Tools. How do they connect? So we have like some studies being um, made and Rhonda, if I'm not mistaken, is here as well. And she's our uh, operational leader of the circle. And uh, I don't know if she wants to talk a little bit more, that's the opportunity. If not, Ted is invited as well. Um, yeah, I think uh, I appreciate Henny sharing that. And there are connections being made, permaculture groups, in my observation, and maybe Henny and Ted can add to this, that there's a lot of interest and excitement. 
are they connecting deeply to each other? Not as much as we might like in the permaculture circle. We really want to bring people together more. Um, and I think, yeah, that's what I would add to the conversation and pass it back. And by the way, Rhonda is also the editor of this magazine. That's why it came out so easily. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, looking still um, on the questions in the chat, uh, John was asking before about a good article to use as a reference for the history and details of your approach, Henny. Oh, I got distracted. Can you can you say, can you read yeah. me again, please? Do you, do you have, uh, can you recommend any good article that would, uh, that would refer to the history and details of your approach? Oh, that's, that's like a homework that we have to do, huh? because uh, there's a saying like uh, from a, a Colombian fra friend that he, he said like, um, el cuento que no se cuenta, no cuenta. Meaning, meaning like the, hist the, the story that we don't tell doesn't count. Doesn't, it's not taking into account or something like this. So um, uh, we are in the process of writing. I'm in the process of creating a blog to uh, share like the more into like daily um, aspects of uh, what we've been facing, what the challenges are and also the opportunities um but we don't have much uh published yet but i'm i've been invited to write to some um uh, newspapers in brazil it's just like wow to find the time to do it all but one thing is that national geographic just did an interview with us and they are coming at the end of this month to take some photos of uh you know to show uh, to try to put in pictures what we've been doing and so you're gonna have an article written in English soon but otherwise yeah it's just like homeworks for us to be able to tell the story and share more and find more people also who are uh, approaching uh, sociocracy into politics aspects and see like the varieties it might be I don't know uh, sociocracy and non-violent communication or sociocracy and whatever um, but yeah it would be nice to you know, to, to, do, to do a politic, a politic circle also to understand, you know, like how we can learn from and with each other. Mm. Yeah, John, John has uh, some other questions, uh, for example, about uh, detailing the, the approach. For example, do you envision the Mandato Collectivo possibly being ge geographic subcircle of a large sociocratic political organization that would include councillors from other regions? Yeah, we have a WhatsApp group so far with um, other collective uh, groups of people. And uh, we are sharing, you know, like the, you know, like we are share. we don't have like current meetings like set in, in sociocracy. I want to do that. But next year, now we are trying to establish this structure within our, um, you know, like from, I know that, that we have, we have like from patterns to details, but sometimes we need to look within to then expand. But this group is, being, is, is created and what, like what we are doing so far is trying to legalize this way of collective, uh, collective mandates in Brazil. So like that's the main um, task that we have within within a group of collective mandates is spread in our country. But it would be excellent to have like a circle where we could share, you know, our experiences and, and learn, you know, like how it's been the acceptance in other places or the projection or to have more. Um, yeah, to have more base in 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 comparing and, you know, like and yeah, sharing with each other. That's, that's a very good idea, John. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Mariela, uh, you asked before a question that was uh, also related to something that uh, Henny has already answered about the internal workings of the political groups. Uh, you asked whether there was uh, explicit conditioning from the legal established political structures to, to is it still a valid question because Henny talked a little bit about this? 
Yes, I think I think she answered um, quite a bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Then back to you, Thomas. I guess that's uh, that's uh, it about the questions in the chat. Yeah, I think uh, it's exactly uh, we said. Okay, we we, we plan to to kind of end the questions around this uh, this time. But feel free to still think about it, and we probably have still time for a question if if you like uh, asking uh, one to Annie. And otherwise, we can go towards the conclusion of this webinar and leave you a few seconds to think about if you have another question. And yeah, at least for me, it was super, super cool experience. And, uh, you know, to listen about this, uh, I'm re really excited and uh, I'm pretty sure it's been for all of you, but you have a chance to to exp to yeah drop in the chat uh, how you've been feeling during this webinar ah mariela has uh, a question i think yeah go for it yeah it's not a question it's uh just um taking some time to to honor uh, what henny is doing um um, many blessings for this. I think it takes a lot of courage and passion to do what you are doing and hope uh, we, we continue this um, cultivation of a new culture. Uh, thank you for inspiring all of us, and especially I felt really inspired. I'm a teacher for a long time. Uh, uh, I've been in education and, and trying to, um, I mean, giving, putting all my energy, life energy into the building of this new culture. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Don't make me cry. Please. But I want, I wanted to to add a little bit to your your. Oh, thanks a lot. It means it means it means a lot to me. I think this is what keeps me motivation. Like it gives me motivation to to carry on into this this path that we chose to to walk but like just uh, building up a little bit in in what you asked about the legal issues uh it's just like a reminder that i came from activism you know like i was doing like civil disobedience and just like chasing the opportunities to speak up you know and 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 learned like on the opposite way of how we could pressure the politics to to have our voices heard. And I think this gave me like a lot of legal understanding on how to do in that and, and what not to do. And, and just like being an activist gave me like, I think this, this, this understanding on, you know, like how to be organized enough in order to, to know, to identify the, the needs behind the tension and address it in a way that we could move forward. So, uh, yeah, it just like when it's illegal, I say, oh, civil disobedience, you know, like, yeah, I was one of them. And now I like, I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the opposite role. And I encourage people to do that because um, um, it's not just us. We have like a more aperture to, to listening, but I think, yeah, I think this, it's, it's a parallel movement that has to happen in order for our society to make sense. Because otherwise, the, the system that we live, you know, like we, we're still talking about majority and minority. And that's, that's like a, a huge misunderstanding of just attending the needs of the, minor, the, the majority and what do you do with the minority. So just like by encourage them to, to be like more activists, to take part. Um, because that you know, like they have an important role. I still have that role as as well, you know, as a citizen. Um, so it's 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 important, you know, to carry on with these uh, civil disobedience sometimes in order to grab attention and to be heard. And my work is to listen to those voices as well. So. Uh, but it's it's a kind of a judgy thing, you know, like this legal aspect, because in the end, you need to take part on something. 
And what made uh, me be comfortable in this situation is to have the permaculture to be taking our decisions from. So we base our decisions on permaculture. So, you know, and, and what we are talking when we say permaculture is just like principles of nature. So we are not going to do anything that um, goes ag against the natural nature law. And, and that gives us like, oh, the, the, you know, the power to know that, you know, whatever decision we, we, we take, we know that we are, you know, we, are, we have like all these principles behind us also to um, giving us the assurance that we need to, to take decisions for people, but with people at the same time. So, yeah, we are finding the ways, but we have more um, assurance when, when we have permaculture with us and when we give voice and, 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 and are listen when we have a structure such as sociocracy. So I think the combination between sociocracy, permaculture and bring it to politics is what it's what made us make us being certain that no, the perfection doesn't exist, but yes, we have a solid um, way to carry on walking into this path. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I feel permaculture gives us the possibility to um, revisit the concept of this sacred activism that is in service of life. Thank you, Mariela, and thank you, Annie. Um, Edith, do you want to jump in? Um, yeah, maybe just, just, well, first of all, my mind is sort of blown and um, I have a lot of gratitude for all that I've heard here and, and it's part of the way for me was to come back to nature also, but to hear how all these permaculture and sociocracy weave and, uh, and really changes from the inside out and therefore changes our politics changes our structure, changes our culture, our educational system. It just feels like a result rather than something that we're trying to achieve. Uh, and one of the words that, uh, that I have echoing in my mind that you used, Henny, was flexibility, that we're very flexible and we flex, you know, and, and sometimes when people learn about sociocracy, it feels a bit rigid. But what I'm hearing from you is that when we really breathe it and walk with it, then sociocracy is very flexible and, and it's just using structure and, and, and the structure of sociocracy and the heart of permaculture to, you know, to produce or to evolve, like you said, uh, a new future, a new possibility for us. And, um, and, and I think it just feels so um, important to where we are now in the world, especially with the COVID uh, so many countries have uh, felt that it's going into uh, all sorts of subtle ways of dictatorships or so on of just really one species. And, and here it just feels like um, really important for this work to be carried out. So I'm so happy that we've invited you here today and really looking forward to see how your work can be spread uh, in all sorts of languages. Um, I'm going to look at translating this one into Hebrew uh, and bringing it here, uh, Israel is in huge need <laughs> for this type of, uh, of uh, evolution. So thank you so much for my part. Thank you, Edith. Irina, do you want to say something then, Henny, and then we can go towards conclusion? I'm greatly impressed by, by the courage and, and all, those, all those ideas that you bring how to hack the system and good luck with this. That was fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Henny, and uh, in the meanwhile, if you want to drop uh, something like how you felt during this uh, webinar, you know, living out of, uh, of this digital space, feel free to do that. And uh, Henny, you want to say something? I'm trying to find a sentence that I would like to share with you guys, but I say that by heart in Portuguese and Spanish. I can, if I don't find it, I can uh, try translating it like in my mind. Uh, 
but I'm sure I have that in in English as well. But let's let's see. I don't I don't know where it is. Bill Mollison. Um, I I I I normally say that if Bill Mollison, you know, like the father of permaculture, was alive, he would have chosen sociocracy as the governing model of his system. And he says once that to um, let me see. Um, uh, many, many sustainable systems are not um, built or spread out because of one very simple and obvious reason. To give power to people, um, to, to, to make sure that people can uh, build their own houses, um, um, find ways to run their own electricity and to farm their own food is to take away the power from them by uh, the, the political and economical aspects. So um, he says, in, instead of people to look into the um, governing um, structures, or, you know, like from, from the, the politics structures or the hierarchical way that we, we deal with, we need to look at each other and find ways to help each other to promote these solutions. More or less like this is much better when it's when it's read in his own words, but meaning that you know, like yeah, we, we need to stop seeking solutions outside to look into the politics itself, the way they uh, exist, or to look into oh, I don't know, but my boss does, and try to find the solutions within ourselves because this is when we bring back the sense of community and community living. Because he says that, you know, like if the world stops right now with um, uh, bringing more uh, knowledge into the system, with what we have already discovered, we can fix the world. Like he said that every discovery that we made so far, we can uh, guarantee that everybody would have a roof and food and we didn't need to discover any more like into, in the following century. So we have already all the solutions, but what preventing us from um, implementing these solutions is exactly the economic power and the political power that we exert into people's lives. So uh, that's why we are trying to be a positive virus into the system, to change the system from within, but also to allow people to have a different perception of the same reality and, and actually empower people or just by seeing that people feel already empowered and and seek for changes outside of this currently system that we are um so used to so i think this is this is what motivates me to do what we do